If you've heard about the Outer Worlds by now, you've probably also heard it touted as Fallout, but in space. The Outer Worlds is Fallout in space. Or even the Fallout game we deserve. Just how Fallout-y is the Outer Worlds? Now, I don't think anyone is refuting how good the Fallout series has been in the past. Fallout 4 and Fallout New Vegas being the two standouts. The difference is where the developers for these two games have gone since then. Obsidian Entertainment released New Vegas in 2010 to critical acclaim, but the studio ran into some financial trouble soon after. Fallout publisher Bethesda refused to pay out bonuses to Obsidian on the grounds that the game didn't meet their standards, which is apparently an average Metacritic score of 85. New Vegas got 84. According to Obsidian executive producer Adam Brennecke, failure in their next pitch would have led to bankruptcy. Fortunately, that next pitch was Pillars of Eternity, which raised $4 million on Kickstarter, which broke the record at the time. Anyway, that's a bit of a digression. Fast forward 10 years, and Obsidian Entertainment, having frequently mentioned their desire to work on another Fallout game after New Vegas, joins Microsoft Studios, and now here we are with their new game, The Outer Worlds. So while Obsidian was fighting financial troubles, Bethesda Game Studios, who developed Fallout 4, are in their heyday, releasing Skyrim in 2011 and following it up with Fallout 4. Both are huge critical and commercial successes, but things have taken a downward turn since, especially if, like Bethesda, we use Metacritic as the defining barometer to a game's success. So let's see here, we get Skyrim Special Edition in 2016, then Skyrim VR and Fallout VR in 2017, and then we get Fallout 76. Huh, I mean, it can't be that bad, can it? Well, I guess the Bethesda Game Studios team aren't getting any bonuses for a while either. So, why is all this important? Well, with Bethesda alienating its fanbase, the proverbial Fallout torch has been passed to the Outer Worlds. So, we need to see if it's any good. It's not surprising that the Outer Worlds takes, shall we say, heavy inspiration from the Fallout series. You wake up with no recollection of your past, you journey across an unfamiliar open world battling mutants, robots and marauders. You meet an array of charismatic characters that desperately want you to run errands for them. You befriend some of them as companions and get to run longer and more complex sets of errands for them. You gain a reputation from travelling across the world running said errands, but there is always the option to shoot anyone you meet in the face just because you can and deal with the consequences later. So, The Outer Worlds doesn't add anything groundbreaking to the RPG genre, but everything that is here is refined. Inventory and mission management is streamlined, weapon and armor customization is plentiful, and your skills and perks progress very swiftly. Player movement is great, especially if you upgrade your sprint speed, and you can fast travel to any previously reached destination on the map. Your skills tree branches out as you would expect, letting you upgrade melee and ranged combat if you want to take the shoot now, ask questions later approach, stealth and hacking if you want the quiet approach, or numerous dialogue-based skills for the pacifist approach. As I usually do with this kind of game, I heavily upgraded the persuasion and intimidation stats so I could parade through the outer worlds as the smooth-talking, armor-clad, gun-toting errand boy that I've always dreamed of being. What do you think you're doing? Just don't let me see you here again. Captain, look out! But where the Outer Worlds impresses the most is through its interesting, likeable characters and its story. The mad scientist and wanted fugitive Phineas Wells revives you from cryosleep aboard the Hope, a giant colonist ship that transports people from Earth to Halcyon. You agree to help the scientists gather more of his self-concocted, reviving serum stuff to revive the rest of the Hope's colonists. Along your travels, you realise that the colonies of Halcyon are in pretty dire straits. There is a severe disparity of wealth, where citizens in most outposts are starving to death while the wealthy elites party it up in Byzantium. This is due to the capitalist nature of the Board, the all-encompassing government that controls Halcyon. Most missions boil down to either helping the oppressed, or maintaining order, or the slightly more elusive and more time-consuming third option where both parties come to a compromise. Whether you complete missions with a silver tongue or a silver bullet, most of your actions have consequences. 
On the planet Monarch, for example, I ruined my chances at a peaceful resolve between the board-occupied Stella Bay and the rogue radicalist group, the Iconoclasts, that had splintered off from the city. I alienated the Iconoclast second-in-command because I didn't get enough food supplies for their people, so she refused to help negotiate a peace treaty with Stella Bay. Not that I'm being salty, but have you ever thought about going and getting food yourself? The place is swarming with alien dogs, and I'm able to eat the flesh straight off the bone without any problems. You are a group of people that seem well-armed and well-educated. Have you just thought about getting off your ass and doing it yourself? No? It wasn't even that I outright refused to help. I had to make a choice between food supplies or weapons. I still did the errand you asked me to do, I just couldn't do all of it. Anyway, my refusal to become an outer space Uber Eats delivery man meant that civil war broke out between Stella Bay and the Iconoclast, and I had to kill all of them. So, moral of the story? Get your own bloody food. Most times though, the non-lethal approach just requires you to have a high enough dialogue skill, which is quite a lazy approach to playing a game, now that I think about it. I don't know why I always want to walk and talk through most of the game unharmed. I think it's maybe I get more out of a character's reaction to being helped or manipulated or lied to, which The Outer Worlds does really well, compared to shooting through countless groups of enemies. Of course, that's the best way to do it for some people, and it's more than possible in The Outer Worlds. The Fallout VAT system is traded out for tactical time dilation, which is pretty much the same in terms of highlighting weak spots, but it will slow down time rather than pause it completely. There's the usual range of weapons, from pistols to shotguns and rifles, and all pack a satisfying punch. Adding mods to your weapons can improve accuracy and damage, but it also allows you to change the damage type. Adding a shock mod, for example, to the chamber of your machine gun will make it fire electronic rounds, which do better damage to robots. You can also tinker weapons to increase their damage, which after I found my favourite weapons became really useful near the end of the game. The combat itself, again, isn't anything groundbreaking to a point where if you did treat the Outer Worlds as strictly an FPS, things would probably get repetitive. But obviously that's not the game Obsidian has taken the time to create. And for me, combat was usually a last resort or a fun pastime travelling between outposts. And in that regard, I can't fault it. I just gotta ask you, do you understand what you're about to do? Words and actions have consequences in the Outer Worlds, but these consequences are largely confined to whichever planet, moon, or space station that you're on. Once you leave for the next set of missions, you don't really hear from anyone again. The board is introduced as this dictatorship that has convinced every colonist on Halcyon that the only route to prosperity is to work almost every waking hour of the day. It's like a page ripped straight from Orwell's 1984, and as you progress through the story, the board's hidden motives start to appear, but you don't actually face much resistance from them until the last few hours of the game. It's here where the Outer Worlds kind of rushes towards its ending, where the antagonist feels kind of just thrown in there because we need someone to shoot at. But we didn't need someone to shoot at. The enemy is the board. It's an entity, not an individual. It was a bit of a shame that when my playthrough of the Outer Worlds involved countless lines of funny, engaging, and meaningful dialogue as I weaved my words through to a resolution, that didn't culminate in the dialogue equivalent of a boss fight. If you do know of any game that kind of does that, then please let me know, I'd love to, I'd love to play it. There may well be a pacifist route through the final level, potentially if you finish all of the Outer Worlds many, many side missions. And that isn't a criticism, I'm just saying that I didn't get through all of them because I wanted this review to be, you know, semi-punctual. There is great depth to the Outer Worlds story and its worlds, but it meant that the final level for me was just a shootout. The climax was a big boss, with a lot more health than any enemy I'd had to deal with. The actual ending, in true choose-your-own-adventure RPG style fashion, if that's the term, reminds you of your choices and the impact they've had. It is literally just a slideshow though. I thought the game had frozen at one point, and then I realised what was happening and yeah, I mean it was a bit of an anticlimax to be honest. So is the Outer Worlds like Fallout, but in space? Yes, and no. It relies on a tried and tested formula that fans of Fallout will appreciate, and anyone who has played Fallout will find very familiar. But I'm not saying that as a negative, and I think Obsidian are aware of this as well, and it means the Outer Worlds doesn't take itself too seriously. Humour and meta-commentary run through its story, drawing parallels to real life without driving too deep into the political. Because ultimately, all of Halcyon's problems can be solved by a guy with a sharp wit and a big gun. <laughs>